Kawasaki's Ninja H2 and the H2R have to be two of the most intimidating motorcycles I've seen in a long time. They're sharp and aggressive, there's oodles of carbon fibre dripping off the R version, and each is finished in a unique mirrored paint mixed with a layer of pure silver. Both have 998cc engines mated to a whopping great big supercharger, and as if that wasn't enough, the track only H2R has aerodynamic winglets to keep it on the ground at high speeds. In a world where bikes are sold on the merit of mind-numbingly boring miles per gallon figures, high service intervals and convenient 0% finance deals, it's really nice to know there's a counterbalance out there in the form of a 240 mile an hour production motorcycle capable of physically taking off in sick gear. And so we swung a leg over the standard H2 for the first track session of the day. And what do you notice first? Well, the stainless steel exhaust system is whisper silent. The seat tapers in at the front, helping the bike feel incredibly narrow. And if you're particularly vain, you'll probably appreciate that reflective mirror finish in the tank. Now, LaSalle is a featureless circuit with no elevation changes and numerous sections that look identical to the last, made even trickier by the heat haze hanging over each apex in the 33 degree heat. Having never ridden there before, it's fair to say my lap times weren't going to have any GP riders worrying. But messy throttle inputs can occasionally be handy, and in this case, they highlighted the settled nature of the H2's chassis. So unlike the new Ducati 1299 Panigale, which pogoes forwards and backwards on jerky throttle inputs, feels stiff and constantly wants to sit up unless you're 100% committed to a corner, the H2 feels compliant and forgiving, even when you don't know where the next corner is. Much of that is thanks to that properly bling candy green trellis frame and the fully adjustable KYB suspension that seamlessly intertwines composure, comfort and confidence at any speed. But realistically, you're not here for the suspension. You're here to find out about that supercharged engine. Driving out the last corner onto the endless ribbon of tarmac, the H2 devoured its six gears as quickly as my foot could feed it up shifts. Near the 14,000 RPM red line, the supercharger comfortably breaks the speed of sound six times over as its impeller winds to 140,000 RPM, sucking in over 200 litres of air a second and then forcefully ramming it into the H2's four cylinders. It's not raucous, nor is it uncivilised or brutal. There's not a huge rush of power anywhere either, just constant smooth drive that rushes the H2 to its electronically limited 186 mile an hour top speed as the supercharger chirps and flutters. A heavy handful of front brake confirms you won't need anything more powerful than the Brembo monoblocks fitted to the H2. Even in 33 degree heat, the brake pads didn't fade despite the bike's relatively hefty 238 kilo wet weight and LaSalle's numerous heavy braking zones. After getting to grips with the relatively abrupt throttle response, the H2 can be flogged around the track at a mind-boggling pace. It has 200 horsepower and bucket loads more torque than any inline four superbike out there, so expect lots of power wheelies and lots of power slides. If I could improve one area on the H2, it would be its electronics package. There's launch control, engine brake control, and a clever nine-stage traction control system that probably saved me from more high sides than I gave it credit for. But unlike many of the new 1000cc superbikes, a lack of lean angle sensor on the H2 means there's no cornering ABS system. That also means the traction control system isn't quite as clever as others on the market. Take for example the R1, it's got six gyros measuring pitch, roll, yaw, and probably what you ate for breakfast that morning too. The H2 has none. It's an advanced system, but it's still a generation behind the rest. A few sessions later, I started to relax and simply enjoy everything brilliant that the H2 has to offer. Power, desirability and craftsmanship that shows up in components from the single-sided swing arm to tiny bolts with impeccable finish to gorgeous welding. Motorcycle journalists have a saying called launch fever, describing the manner in which it's really easy to shower a bike in praise when you're riding it on perfect roads, in a beautiful country, in a sunny climate. Not this time. I'm completely sure the H2 would feel just as special anywhere else in the world. And then there was the H2R. Now from the rider seat, you do well to know you have an extra 126 horsepower beneath you. In fact, the aerodynamic wings, the carbon fibre front and side fairing and titanium exhaust system are probably the only giveaways that you're not riding just the standard H2, but then you fire it up. Now if you appreciate the sound of thunder, then you will appreciate the H2R. It is by far the loudest thing I've ever heard on two wheels. Louder than a MotoGP bike, louder than a loud thing, but it's not obnoxious, it sounds incredible. Pulling out onto the circuit, the change in power delivery compared to the H2 
was immediately noticeable. Despite that huge power increase, the R's engine internals aren't actually too dissimilar to the standard bikes. There's more aggressively timed camshafts, a different head gasket, and a stronger clutch to deal with the larger power output. So what does 326 horsepower feel like? Put it this way, I have never, ever felt acceleration like it. First, second, and third gear can only be described as ferocious, and it will happily throw the front wheel into the air at every and any opportunity. It will then churn through the remaining three gears with just as much urgency. Most of us on the launch reached an indicated 200 miles an hour before having to shut off for the first corner. On a long enough straight, Kawasaki claims the H2R will reach 240 miles an hour, and I believe them. At 200, it was still accelerating like a 600cc Supersport in fourth gear. And because the H2R weighs a whole 22 kilos less than the H2, it stops faster at the other end of the straight, turns in better, and offers more feedback when you're inevitably leaning on the traction control system to help you power slide out corners. Forget base jumping, forget free climbing, forget high altitude slacklining, Kawasaki's H2R is the ultimate thrill. Having tasted the madness of 326 horsepower supercharged goodness, I genuinely feel sad about not knowing when I will again. The Ninja H2 I will probably remain the most sensational motorcycle I've ever ridden. I love that. I want one. Can I have one, please? <laughs>